Welcome to the Profit Talks podcast, hosted by the Orange County Inland Empire SBDC Network, funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration and the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. This show is the go-to resource for business owners seeking empowerment, education, and resources to succeed. Join us as we connect you with experts, share the triumphs of fellow entrepreneurs, and reveal the wealth of assistance available to you today to level up your business. So let's go. Let's dive in and learn more. All right, I'm ready to learn a lot more about Visionaire Optometry Spa. Uh, I want to figure out what all that means and unpack it for you here as we bring in the owner of this business, and I'll let her introduce herself so I don't mess up her name here. (laughs) Welcome. No worries. I'm Dr. Shaquille, and yes, it's pronounced like Shaquille O'Neal. I like to joke and say I'm just a lot shorter than him. (laughs) (laughs) Very, very easy to say it that way. So tell me your story. Um, How did you get into this field and how did you open this business? Um, Great question, Paul. So this field, I knew growing up I wanted to be in the medical field. I always gravitated towards medicine, science, math. Um, My mother, she's a physician as well. So it just naturally kind of fell on us too. Um, And then I went to undergrad at UC Irvine, and I was doing the whole pre-med route there, too. i got to point out that our studio is at UC Irvine, so go Anteaters. Go (laughs) Anteaters. Really great, really great school, really great education there. Um, And so at that time, when you're starting to look and apply for grad schools and doctorates program, Um, Somebody suggested that I shadow different doctors to see, do I truly see myself there five years, 10 years down the line? So growing up, I thought I was going to be a pediatrician or a psychiatrist. I shadowed a lot of different doctors and nothing really clicked. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, my grandfather, who's such an inspiration, passed away. And he was completely blind from a condition called glaucoma. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I started looking into becoming an eye doctor. So I looked into ophthalmology. I have a great fear for blood and guts. Um, And also I wanted a better work-life balance. So I shadowed my optometrist as well. And my optometrist and all the other optometrists I shadowed, their personality was just amazing. Their work-life balance was amazing. The concept of optometry is so unique too, that there's a whole medical side of things, but there's also a whole fashion aspect of things too, which is so unique. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So I hear two things in that story. One is some personal connection. Your grandfather suddenly opened your eye to, hey, maybe I can help other eyes. Maybe I can help people with their eyes. And mm-hmm. and the other one that I don't hear many physicians ever think about until it's too late is work-life balance. You said you want to be a pediatrician. There's no work-life balance. The baby comes when it comes. It's <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning. you got to go. Um, yeah, so that, I, I don't know, I just fell into my lap, I guess, the whole concept of let's go shadow different doctors. And to me, um, I, I like to travel. I like to go experience different brunch spots. Um, I like a little bit of freedom and autonomy too. So with, um, optometry, I found a lot of that granted now that I opened this new small business, it's a whole nother story. Yeah, Um, I had a lot of, uh, a great work-life balance there for sure. So let's talk about opening a business. Now you graduate, you find your passion, you find your work-life balance, and now you throw that work-life balance out the window because you got a business to run and you got to get the door open and you got to stock the supplies and you got to go to conferences afterwards and and, uh, look at the latest fashions and stuff here. Why open your own? Why not just work for somebody else? Um, 
Yes. Well, I had <laughs> this dream back when I was in um, my grad school program. I was literally daydreaming about it, about creating a spot that would be like a one-stop eye health and wellness spot. And there's nothing like that in the industry. No. There's no practice like that at that time. And so through the years of seeing thousands of patients working at multiple different offices, I realized a lot of these patients had true concerns about um, the dark circles around their eyes or the crow's feet or the sagging skin. And I literally had nothing to offer them. And so at that time, um, it just made sense to create something that would encompass both things. And I knew that I was in a unique position where my husband's an MD as well. I told him my idea and he's like, okay, whatever you need, honey, let me help you. (laughs) Shout out to your husband. What's his, what's your husband? What's his name? Let's give him a shout out here. What's his name? His name is Dr. Ansari or Sean. Um, Love him. Amazing guy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so he started training in um, aesthetics and minimally invasive treatments. And it just made sense because the eyes are the first place to show signs of aging on our face. So it just made sense that all these patients were addressing these concerns to me. Um, And it's also the first place that people look at when they're talking to you too. So, you know, not only from a personal side that you're going to notice it, but other people looking out might start to notice that too. Um, so we created this spot where it's literally your one-stop eye health, wellness, and beauty spot. Um, and we're able to address these concerns now too, which is fantastic. I love the opportunity to have that option there. But at the end of the day, the practice is really more of um, the foundation is optometry and treating dry eye disease and syndrome too. So let's talk about that a bit. Cause as you can tell, I wear glasses. I've worn glasses since I was in the fifth grade. And mm-hmm. as I've gotten older, my eyes, they not only seem to change more often, but other changes I'm noticing like dry eyes. I wake up in the morning and my eyes are very dry or very crusty um, I found more uh, periodically more dark circles and stuff like that. And it starts mm-hmm. to make me worry. I never think about my eye health. I think about my heart health and I think about my lungs and I think about all these other parts of my body. Why do we not think about our eyes and the health of our eyes? That never occurred to me when I was younger. Mm-hmm. That is so true because the way we process our world, 80% of that comes through vision and our eyes. And so to me, I like to consider myself as a sight saver. There you go. I like that. The sight saver. We'll put that on your card. Sight saver. The sight saver. Um, And as we age, we do start to see a lot of changes. But nowadays, we're seeing over 200, sorry, not 200, 20 million Americans suffering with dry eye disease and syndrome just because of this whole um, screen screen culture that has come about. Exactly. I'm staring at a screen all the time, and that's why they got me to do blue in the (laughs) lens or something to try and counteract some of that, right? Yeah. So um, what... Our biggest thing is we're one of the few in Inland Empire to actually treat and manage dry eye syndrome. Usually your eye doctor will be like, here's some over-the-counter drops. Use these. Good luck. See you in a year. You know, but here we're a little different um, in the sense that it's so prevalent now, even in young patients as well as elder patients too, just because of that pandemic, the Zoom culture, once we're done with our work from Zoom, we close the TV or sorry, the computer, and we're on our cell phone scrolling. Exactly. And so that screen time has been linked to chronic dry eyes over time because we're not blinking as much as we're supposed ah, to. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So it's been shown we blink 30 to 50% less when we're on a screen. And The way our tear glands work is they get activated by us blinking. So basically, 
I'm he's trying a little, to blink. I'm trying to blink more right now as we're talking. Okay, it looks strange. Let me give you but. A little little tip here. Um, <laughs> uh, just a little like one second tip. But every 20 minutes, when you're on the screen, you want to look 20 feet away for 20 seconds and make sure you're giving full, complete blinks. Because over time, I'm very try, super. I'm trying simple. it as you're talking here. I'm trying. <laughs> Wait, Super okay. simple. Right. It will help prevent our tear glands from dying off, quote unquote, because over time, if we don't use it, we lose it. Yeah. And so our office is very unique in the sense that what we do, like when you go to the dentist, they do an x-ray of your teeth. Well, we kind of do a quote unquote x-ray of the tear glands in your eyes to ah. see where you're at. Okay. And so we can gauge to see if there's any meibomian gland dysfunction or loss or quote unquote cavities going on. And what we like to do is help to slow down that progression um, and actually using some of the most advanced technology to help treat these conditions and slow down the progression. So it's really an exciting field and it's really growing and prevalent in our communities now too. Um, the great news is we have a solution now for everybody too. So you have just opened my eyes to a whole <laughs> new world. I <laughs> have been to eye doctors, optometrists my whole life. I go in, I have my eyes tested. Yes, they do the little pressure tests for glaucoma. I know that's something that can happen like with your grandfather's your older, so you, you be aware of that. But other than that, all they do is say, "Does can you see? Can you, how can you, does this look okay? I like to call it the one and two, you know? <laughs> yeah, one and two. Is it one and two, one and two? And then we dial it in as good as we can. And then he says goodbye and I come back. I'm supposed to come back once a year, maybe every couple of years I come back. That's why you got to come to me, Paul. You're going to have a fun time. I'm telling you, I, I never <laughs> think of any of this stuff here. So, yeah. Um, no, so there's a lot that goes into it. It looks very basic, um, but... The whole idea of checking your vision, your eye pressures, just by keeping up with an annual eye exam, we could prevent 80% of blindness. For example, wow. my grandfather, if he would keep up with those annual eye exams, he would have not gone completely blind. Wow. So to me, it's just huge, so important. The earlier we catch these conditions, the better the prognosis. Well, you got my attention. You opened my eyes. Again, I'll use that analogy again. <laughs> Um, so what other things, why call it a spa? A spa is where I relax and I get a massage and I get, uh, I, I get some, uh, essential oils and I relax and, and, uh, you know, I don't picture an eye, an optometry spa. I've never heard that term before. Why call it a spa? Well, um, usually it's a actually, clinic. Uh, I have it's a spa experience. And for me, I was. I've worked at multiple offices and I've seen nuances that worked, nuances that don't work. I saw things that I would like to add. So I've carefully curated this whole patient experience to make it feel very comfortable and relaxing and inviting as well. There's no, so, there's no patient experience in an eye exam. Is it one or two, one or two? <laughs> and then they switch yeah. and then you leave. Yeah then you leave, right? So there's so much more to that. And then as I was working over the past decade, seeing thousands of patients, I'm like, we're missing a lot of key elements here. That patient connection is so important. Yeah. Um, seeing the patient as a person, as opposed to just a patient or a number, you know? And so for me, I wanted to give that full experience there. As soon as our patients walk in our office, they're greeted by um, our receptionist. It's just a full of warmth that comes to you. Um, we also offer our patients refreshments while they're waiting. We also do all of our state-of-the-art technology. And just like at any medical office, we have to do an extensive intake. So right. while I'm doing that extensive patient history, um, I actually do like our signature quote unquote digital detox that kind of gently massages the eyes. A too. digital detox. I'm massaging my, wait, honey, I'm massaging my eyes. And you got to come, Paul. You just got to come. Gotta You're going to love it. Do people, all right, so let me ask you a question then. I go to a spa or my wife loves to go to a spa with her girlfriends. This is a special treat. 
let's go to the spa and and pamper ourselves. Do I do I go to your thing and pamper my eyes? I I don't need new eye exam. I just want to pamper my eyes. I want to I want to I want to feel good. We could do that. Yes, with our digital detox just for you, Paul. We could, <laughs> I'm coming. We could I'm do coming. that. Um no, but the whole experience there is just it's so inviting and comforting and so even some of the patients that come through the door when they bring their kids, we have a few kids who come and um, they're like, we love this place. This is the cool doctor's office. Oh my goodness. Kids, <laughs> uh, kids never like going to the doctor, much less like a they dentist or an eye here. doctor. And oh yeah. They absolutely love it. They make themselves feel comfortable and at home. So that whole spa notion about comfort, relaxation, that's what we really truly try to embody here. Um, and also with a personalized, um, high quality care as well. So I get why you put vision in an optometry spa or clinic. I always <laughs> think of it as a clinic, but why are you, I thought that was clever that you're a visionaire. You're not, this isn't just about my vision. This is about your vision of how this experience can be better, can be different. You're, you're looking off and seeing something that I've never seen before, a an optometry spa where my eyes are treated <laughs> and examined and relaxed and it's warm and it's welcoming. Is that why the name you're, you're not just vision, my vision, but your vision of where this industry is going. Um, I would like to say, yes, I feel like this, <laughs> the whole experience is warm, welcoming and relaxing. Um, we also have our med spa aspect too, so that kind of links into the spa as well. I was going to ask that because it would seem like if you've opened my eyes, if you've opened my awareness of taking care of my eyes, then I'm going to immediately go outside and say, well, what about these crow's feet? What about these spots? What about my skin? What about everything surrounding my eyes? So do you also get into that? Can I get to... Uh, Yes, definitely. So we do, um, now that we have this whole med spa aspect, we can go ahead and help reduce crow's feet, reduce the dark circles, help improve the changes of the skin around the eyes too. Um, and we do all non-invasive procedures. So it's a lot of fun. And then when you come into our office too, it just feels like a spa. We have a whole separate area where we do like our dry eye treatments, our med spa services too. It's a little bit more elevated compared to the other parts of the office. So it really truly feels like a separate spa area as well. Um, and I have to thank a lot of that to my dad. He's an architect. So he helped design and bring uh, that vision to fruition there too. Because I've never seen the combination of those two. There are lots of med spas more than ever popping up as we're trying to get more than just the basic health. Yes, uh, I, I want my blood pressure down. I want my uh, glucose level. I want my I, I want my uh, cholesterol under control. There, there are various things I do, but I also want to, I want to live better longer. I don't just want to live longer. I want to live better longer. So, and, and I'm more conscious of not just how I look, but how I feel. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's really what the med spa experience is. I think it's about, it's about making your life, trying to deal with these problems, uh, uh, dry eye, it's a chronic condition. So most mm -hmm. of us just go, ah, live with it. Mm -hmm. And you're saying you don't have to live with it. We can make it better. We definitely, there's no real cure for dry eye syndrome. And there's right. so many different elements to it because there's so many different tear glands in our eyes, but we definitely try to help manage it with you. We definitely try to help um, improve your daily quality of life. Like you mentioned, I like to consider it kind of like our dry eye treatments, like Ozempic quote unquote, where <laughs> you get to where you want to be and then you maintain after that. So yeah. we try to help you get to where you want to be. What kinds of, we'll just talk quickly, what kinds of things can we do outside of your office? They, I saw somewhere that you can put a little mask on, a heated mask, and maybe that helps open your eye glands up. Or am I just falling for these tricks that they're trying to sell over the internet? Are there things that I can do other than drops? Are there things I can do to help my eyes? 
Definitely. So I love the basic 2020 rule. I think that is so important while you are behind a screen. Um, the other thing is hydration. So our body is 70% water. Our tears are 98% water. So while we're not blinking, our tears are evaporating so quickly. So you want to definitely increase your hydration there too. The other thing is, yes, those warm compresses, I love them, but they need to be at a certain temperature um, and they need to be on your eyes for a certain amount of time because what that essentially does, it helps to activate those oil glands that help to keep the tears on your eyes longer mm. to give you better relief there too. So um, no, it's not a hoax. It really works, but every patient is different. Like if you have what we call ocular rosacea and you're doing warm compresses, you're actually going to make it worse. Oh, so that's okay. why you should go in with your um, optometrist and come up with a game plan with them too. They just don't talk about this. I go in, I get most of, I, maybe because I go to the big chains. We all know about these big chains that are out there. I won't, I won't mention any of them, but they're at the <laughs> mall. Maybe that's yeah. where you work and you walk in and there's a long line of people. And it the, it, the whole place is really about picking out your glasses. The optometrist <laughs> is there so you don't have to leave here let's get the prescription done right and then the rest of the experience is all about trying on glasses nobody ever talks about a regimen for my eyes they never talk to me about eye health they talk to me about does can you see let's make sure you don't have something really bad like glaucoma or whatever and then go pick out what you want so uh, let's talk about the fashion part of it here because that's the fun part once you once you decide nobody likes wearing glasses. I wish I didn't have to wear glasses, but I've worn them so long that if I'm going to have to put up with it, then I want to make it, I want to make it disappear. I want to make it fit my face. I want to do all these things. How do you, how do you handle the fashion aspect of it? How do you keep up to date with what's cool and what's current and, and offer people a full selection? So what we do, once we do our eye exams, we go ahead and pair you up with an optical stylist who kind of already has an, an optical idea. stylist. Okay. I've oh, never yeah. heard of an optical <laughs> stylist. I heard of Joe over here or Sue yeah. who will help you fit glasses and will tell you the price, but I never heard of a stylist. No. So our stylists are amazing. So they will look at your face. They'll recommend some pairs of glasses. You got to think of glasses as two things. One, it's a medical device that's right. going to help you see your world, process your world. And two, if it's going to be on your face, it better look cute and it better make sense on your face right. too. Um, so they also look at your personality. They see what you do for a living your as well. Personality. Kind of, what, what do you mm -hmm. like to do? Are you a fun person or are you a serious person here? Like, yeah. Cause then we can go two ways. We can either go very bold or we can go very subtle and, so for us, you know, we don't try to impose too much on the patient. We let them kind of guide us and where they want to go. And then we'll go ahead and say, okay, well, this will work best with your profession or this will work best with your prescription. Um, this kind of brings out your eyes a little bit better. This works with your skin tone a little better. So we do help with all of that too. And I actually have fun with that part as well. So while I'm uh, waiting around, I'll come out and help the patients too. Wow. So we all have a good time. <laughs> I never see the doctor out of the back room. The doctor, he or she is back there. They do their thing. And then next, and then they, they send me to the sales portion. I only no. have to drag my wife along because she's the only one that has any fashion sense. I don't, I'm a guy, you know, okay, that's fine. Um, and Don't I get have, me wrong. We have a lot of husbands who come in and like, I need my wife to come in to make the final word. Absolutely. So a lot of times they'll bring their wives in too. She's but the she, one that's going to look at it all the time. She says, no way. No, we're not looking at that, you know, or, right? or that looks better. Right. <laughs> all right. So what is the new trends in eyewear? I, I like the rimless minimal, but I see these people with back of these giant heavy black glasses like I used to was forced to wear as a kid and I guess I hated them because they stood out so much but now that's cool I see these people with these giant black glasses on what where's the industry going with glasses are we trying to we're trying Think to you're hit it on the head like if you're gonna wear it own it you know yeah. and um <laughs> it's basically like a jewelry piece that's a statement piece and it's a little bit about you too um, so yes, a little bit thicker, chunkier is really in right now. Clear lens, clear frames are really in right now. We have a lot of people asking us about um, 
frames that you can actually take pictures with too. So we offer that as well. Wow. Yeah. So it's a, it's a huge range and we have to be sensitive to the generations too, because certain generations will like a certain thing, certain generation will like another thing. Cause if you're not comfortable in it and we're imposing this style on you, you're not going to wear it. So yeah. it has to make sense for you as a so person. So let's look into the future. I'm hearing that glasses are going to be the cutting edge for the new uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. My glass is going to have little displays in them that I can put up information or it can project, uh, uh, I don't know, like sort of like military goggles where you have all this data uh, around you and you can use it or, or maybe it plays something or maybe it's my interface to my computer. I hear the wildest thing. Are you guys ready for any of that here? This new world where the glass is more than just a medical device. It's a communications. It's an entertainment. It's a, it's some other I think we're actually gearing towards that direction right now, too. So um, with an example would be the Ray-Ban meta frames. So they're actually gearing us towards that. Um, I find that it's really fascinating that we're merging the two together. Yeah. And now we're merging, the, actually, I should say a third element. With the that computer that is, is in my eyeglasses here now. So oh, I, that's, that's how cool. I can see stuff or communicate or move. Or I, I don't can, even know how I feel about it, but um, yeah. it's here. It's, it's happening. Here. It's happening. So. <laughs> you know, because wasn't it wasn't it Google Glasses that they were playing with for all? There was a there was yeah, a, there was a Google Glasses. You're right. Um, there's uh, the Meta Frames too. So and they're, they're thinking they're that a, out with a lot of different things. And they're thinking that eventually these heavy headsets that you wear for uh, for uh, virtual reality will get shrunk down and maybe even to the point where it's your glasses. Now, maybe it's a clunkier, chunkier set of glasses that has to contain all these circuits and stuff here. But I, I just think my whole life, it was trying to pretend you didn't have glasses on. If you had glasses, you were a dork. If you had glasses, you were a, a you know, a little, you were studied too hard. Girls with glasses never get passes, whatever. Girls weren't supposed to get glasses. <laughs> Guys weren't supposed to wear glasses. I heard that. Oh, That's yeah. So, so, funny. so we're trying to hide glasses. And then for years, it was all about wearing, um, uh, what do you call them, uh, contact lenses to pretend and everything. And that's still out there. But it seems like that just caused more problems than ever. People that got stuck, they hurt, they dried. I, I never could get into contact lenses. It was just too much of a pain and too difficult. So I stuck with the old glasses and now maybe I'm cool because maybe I can put, you know, other things into the glass to see, to ah. project into the world. Maybe having glasses will be the new cool thing. I think it is the cool thing because well, as soon as you put a pair of like really I don't know, fashion forward. Ray-Bans for, for me as a guy, you put Ray-Bans on. Yeah, right? like all of a sudden you just feel more confident. You look cooler too with sunglasses. Um, so I do not think they make you look dorky. I think you look cool, Paul. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what I'm, I'm fishing for compliments here today. That's all, <laughs> no. all right, so if people, where are you located? I, I forgot to even ask, what city are you in? So we're located in Riverside. Okay. Um, Woodcrest, Orangecrest area. We're on the third floor of a medical building. Now, forgive me, but I don't picture Riverside as the center of cool culture, but I know it's I changing. Know. I know it's getting better. I know it's not just sleepy suburbia or, or uh, it, it's, I see more and more cool cutting edge businesses happy, boba shops and other weird things and stuff. And I'm like in Riverside? I, maybe a, maybe in Irvine here, but in Riverside, why Riverside? Well, Riverside, I'm actually, I was born and raised in Inland Empire. Okay. Um, I went to Irvine. I love Orange County, but all my family's in um, Inland Empire. And so to me, I wanted to create something nice for us too in Inland Empire yeah, area. Absolutely. Well, um, we, a lot of my friends will come and they'll see the spot. They're like, this needs to be in Orange County, LA. Why did you build it here? I'm like, this is my community. That's I think right. we deserve nice things too. You know, like why right. drive an hour away right. for these basic necessities that we need to. So how is Riverside? How long have you been open and how has it been accepted? Um, so we've been open for almost a year now. And I think we're slowly growing traction. 
Uh, I'm more, I'm not going to lie, I'm more of a clinician. I've been in a dark room with my patients yes. for over a decade. And this whole business aspect of things is um, I'm still learning every day. And so one key thing I've learned is that when they say you build it, they'll come. It's more like when you market it, they will come. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, you can't throw the doors open and say, come on in. They're not waiting. I know. <laughs> so how did you find the SBDC? This is the SBDC podcast, and we'd like to spend the last couple of minutes just talking about how you found them and how they've helped you. Yes. So um, I did have this dream of building a one-stop eye health and wellness spa, and this was over a decade ago. Right. And a few years ago, um, I was given the opportunity to look into purchasing a pre-existing um, practice and taking over that. Yeah. And for me, I did not know how to read financials or P&Ls. I didn't understand the numbers. Right. And I'm one of the first in my family to do anything like this. Um, so we reached out to the SBDC. They paired me with Hang, who is absolutely amazing. Let's give a shout out to your consultant. Who is your consultant? Hang. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. and From Orange County. So she's absolutely amazing. She was looking over my numbers and she was just like, Doc, I see you have this different <laughs> vision. Doc. Did she call you? <laughs> the, hey, Doc. You have yeah. this different <laughs> vision. Like, you need to do something on your own. These numbers are not making sense. Um, and at that time, I was so um, stuck on acquiring that practice. And due to COVID, it fell through. So I put it back on hold, but once you have that entrepreneur mind, it's so hard to go back. Yeah. It is so hard. So she was, she put it in my head, like, why don't you build your own thing? I was like, no. And then one day I just woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this thing. And so I think Hang has a huge integral part in that. And um, I think the SPD for that, they were there for a ribbon cutting as well. Uh, and it's a great resource and tool for anybody looking into opening up a business and, and not know where to start. People can't <laughs> believe that you can have access to these kind of quality people who not just answer a couple of questions for you, but can help you like a paid consultant, even though you're not paying for it, the government's paying for it walk mm -hmm. you through this vision and carry it out and say, well, I'm, I see what you're saying, but if that's what you want to do, have you ever thought of this? No, definitely. And I felt like that resource has been so important um, into opening up a business, especially for somebody like me with no business experience right. or no backbone to like fall on. So it was really <laughs> huge to have that. No um, backbone. You got lots of backbone to do this <laughs> in the first place here. But I back so much I have so much and I'm so fortunate in terms of the support in my family, having my dad help with the build out, having my husband help with the med spa. Um, it was just that whole financial part that I was missing. Like, how do I read all these numbers, yeah, you know? Right. Because it is a business at the end of the day and it's got to make sense. Dollars and cents. Do we sell more of this? Do we carry more of this? Are we uh, efficiently using our staff and, and our resources and do we need more space or less space? I'm well, learning that because I'm a, I'm a universal healthcare type of girly. So my staff has to like pull me back and they're like, okay, we can't be giving everything for free. I'm yeah. like, but they need it. Right. So they're like, you gotta pay our bills. <laughs> yeah. Right. We've got to figure out what they, and what the market will bear and what the market needs. And you think everybody wants this, but they're really coming in and asking for this. And you're like, you don't need yeah. that. You need this, but you have to be sensitive to what the market's aware uh, mm -hmm. and open to. All right. Well, I'm thrilled that you found your way, that you saw a path forward and you Thank jumped. You. What would you say to other people who are afraid of jumping or are thinking of jumping? Is it is it scary in the water or, or come on in? This is everybody should do this. Um, so I feel like fear is always going to be there. It's just a matter of getting past that fear, knowing it's going to be in the back there, but still pushing forward is right. so important because everybody has that fear. Um, it is not for the faint hearted. You know, there's been days where I have breakdowns, but then I have an amazing support. So as long as you have somebody to lean on or just some a community or friends to be there for you, friends or family, 
go for it. It's, and you have to be committed to it because it is mm-hmm. it, it, the first thing every entrepreneur learns. I learned every entrepreneur learns, won't this be fun? I'll finally get to be my own boss. I'll finally get to do it my way. Yeah. But at a price, the price is it's coming out of your pocket. The price is it's, uh, you're, uh, uh, you're on the line. And more importantly, you at the end of the day have to make sure it all happens. It doesn't just happen by itself. You don't just open the doors and people it. walk in. Yeah. It doesn't. And for me, I think that is one of the biggest thing I'm learning. Like every day I learn a little bit more, but I do have two little kids too. So I'm still trying to navigate um, that as well, because here I used to be working part-time, but now I'm working full-time and overtime, you yeah, know, overtime. So, right. Right, my little ones are like grabbing for my attention as soon as I come home. So I'm learning how to kind of like bring him into the business here. That's what (laughs) (laughs) I know my little ones. Like I want to be an eye doctor. Yeah, exactly. Do it. (laughs) Well, you've made eye doctors cool for me here. I'm going to have to check this thing out. An eye, a a optometry spa. I have to keep looking at it because I got to look away every so often. (laughs) That's an optometry spa. I think she will really love it too. Give me your uh, location and website and all that. And tell us how people they can find you. How do they find you? So we're located at um, 18876 Van Buren Boulevard, um, Suite 203, Riverside, California. And it's 203, but we're actually located on the third floor. So people do tend to get lost. So third floor. Um, Our website is www.visionaireoptometryspa.com. And let's let's spell them. visionaire because that has a few <laughs> other letters in there. Visionaire is V as in Victor, I S I O N A I R E, optometry spa.com. Well, today we're talking to a true entrepreneur, a true visionaire. And I want to thank <laughs> you for joining us. And I wish you all the best of luck. And when I'm out in Riverside, I got to come and get my eyes. Honey, I'm going to spend, I'm going to the eye massage. I'm going to the eye uh, spa here today. I would love to have you. You're going to have a really good time. I um, don't want to hype it up, but 100% guaranteed. You're 100%. Have a- <laughs> 100% guarantee. You heard it right here, folks. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate it. All right. As we conclude another episode of the Profit Talks podcast, we hope we've empowered your entrepreneurial spirit. Reach out to us to connect with our experts and let's take your business to the next level. Keep those dreams alive, keep pushing forward and stay tuned for more. And if you liked what you heard in today's podcast and you want your business to reach new heights, just contact us at ProfitTalksPodcast.org or call us at 1-800-616-7232. That's 1-800-616-7232. So until next time, keep thriving.